take the girl out of art school, but you can't take the art school out of girl. So uh, in high school, my best friend and I would pass notes in class, and this was the late 90s, uh, excuse me, late 1900s, so no cell phones. So we passed notes in class, and to avoid suspicion from the teachers, we would open a pen and roll up the note, put it inside, and then borrow a pen. Uh, we didn't know it at the time, but we were engaging in the ancient art of steganography, the practice of hiding secret information within a public channel or object. Okay, hello, my name is Vanessa, and I work at Daily, a platform for building live video and audio applications. At least, that's my cover job. <laughs> Thank you for all the laughs. <laughs> Steganography literally means covered writing, and most modern applications focus on hiding information within digital files, and digi uh, video is digital, usually, so here we are. Uh, but before you think this is too out there or weird, um, like data moshing, which is cool, uh, a few things. One, a lot of these concepts are applicable to video watermarking, which is admittedly more applicable to everyone in this crowd than spy games. Two, not everyone is free to express themselves openly. So evading surveillance is a useful skill for rebels as well as spies. And finally, three, there may be a secret message hidden in this cover presentation. The secret is bold, and with that, here's the agenda for today. First, we'll cover terminology, life cycle, and the most common embedding method, least significant bit. Then we'll explore the three properties that make a viable steganographic approach. Imperceptibility, robustness, and I lied. Instead of talking about embedding capacity, we're gonna talk about what AI contributes to the practice of hiding data because it's so hot right now. Uh, and all throughout, we'll touch on steganalysis. What is that? Why is the practice of detecting hidden messages? And we know that steganography is hiding secret messages within non-secret means. It's different than stenography, which is writing in shorthand or taking dictation. Okay, a cover object. This is the original media without added data. It could be an image, video, data stream, you name it. The secret message. This is the data to be hidden. And when we say secret message, its binary form is implied. Stego object. This is the cover media, the cover object with the secret message hidden inside of it. The stego key. This is optional and sort of an amorphous concept, but it basically is how the receiver unlocks or retrieves the secret message. And finally, a stego file is someone who loves stegosauruses. I lied again, it's actually a person who enjoys climbing up the outside of buildings. That's true, look it up. All right, now let's review the life cycle which I totally made up, but is real. So we start with the secret, convert it to binary, obtain a cover object, embed said secret into said cover object. We send the stego object. The receiver obtains the stego object. The receiver retrieves the secret profit, probably. Uh, now let's take a look at this step right here. How do we embed the secret? Well, that's where our friend least significant bit comes in. LSB is the most straightforward data embedding approach to implement without being like super noticeable or corrupting the cover image. And I say image, but everything also applies to a video keyframe. The short, short, overly simplified version of LSB is as follows. An image has pixels. Each pixel is comprised of RGB values. Each value is eight bits, but not all bits are created equal. Some are valued one and two, while others are 128. The LSB approach hijacks the ones and twos for its secret message while having a negligible visual effect. I mean, can you tell the difference between these colors? These, don't answer. <laughs> to further illustrate this, in this video, each pixel was turned black if the least significant bit of the green value was zero and white if it was one. And it's mostly noise. But here, the most significant bit is determining if the pixel is black or white and the content is pretty obvious now. So if we replace the LSB of half the pixels in an image, because half would presumably already be the correct secret bit value, it would be near impossible for anyone to clock the altered pixels. Man, steganography is easy. Uh, but the last there is steganalysis. 
And unfortunately, it's fairly elementary to detect this straightforward method. So if you made like a histogram of the stego image, the frequency distribution would betray a pattern and your message could easily be read by steg analysts. They're likely using passive warden techniques and this is steg analysis with the intention of identifying, preserving, and ideally reading your hidden message. And as chill as these dinos are, we don't want that. So to cover our tracks, we pick and choose which pixels to change. This is called the selection channel. And the knowledge of it would be a stego key. Like with the key, the receiver would know which pixel values to read back. So you can just pick uh, pixels randomly or use a pattern, or you can employ adaptive steganography, which this is where you choose pixels based on the content of the cover image. And you can favor spatial areas that are like less likely to raise eyebrows. For a cherry on top, for every secret bit that flips from a one to a zero, you swap a zero for a one somewhere else in the image to keep the noise balanced. And this way you do lose half the embedding capacity, but you evade a few steg analysts. So it's kind of a win. And that is least significant bit, the Swiss Army knife of steganography. Armed with this tool, we sneak into imperceptibility and find the least conspicuous bits to flip. Compression algorithms are good at identifying information that we won't even miss in the first place, so they're ideal to exploit here. In the spatial domain, we can mess with discrete cosine transform. Instead of applying LSB to the pixel values directly, we apply it to the DC coefficients when compressing the media. And here we would only alter the middle frequencies because they're both safe to hide data yet avoid perceptible changes. Same goes for dual tree and vanilla discrete wavelet transform because the fancier the algorithm, the better for hiding secrets. And in the temporal domain, we can mess with motion vectors. Honestly, the maths on this one are a bit over my head and I just learned about H.264, so um, let's just assume that we can just say local optimality, prediction error, and sum of absolute difference into an AI model and it'll do it for us, and we can take a commercial break. <coughs> Has this ever happened to you? You spend hours crafting your Stego video. You upload it for all the internet to see but it gets recompressed and most of the bytes are now changed. The secret is lost forever. Well, now you can share your secret with redundancy and bonus order indifference. It's called Shamir's Secret Sharing and it's been around since 1979. Okay, back to the program. Robustness, AKA repetition. To increase resilience, we could simply repeat the secret as is within the cover image, but that would create a pattern making it mad vulnerable to stake analysis and it still wouldn't tell the receiver how to fix a minor error. So we ret um, in this case, we, retur we turn to, excuse me, fancy repetition using things like error correcting codes, like Hamming codes. You might think of these as kind of like spell check. They detect and correct small errors like flipped bits due to recompression or transmission. Uh, erasure codes, these handle missing data like a dropped frame by breaking up the secret into blocks. Uh, continuing the grammar analogy, they're kind of like a thesaurus. They repeat the blocks using different blocks that mean the same thing. Examples include fountain codes, like raptor codes, also a dinosaur, and wet paper codes. These treat the pixels the sender chose not to choose, or chose, chose not to put secrets in, as missing data. And despite the receiver knowing nothing about which pixels have secret bits, they can still recover the message. And stenographers call this writing on wet paper, so if the cover image was left out in the rain, the sender only writes in the dry parts of paper, then the rain drops dry, and the receiver does not know which parts have secret writing and which don't. But my favorite robustness boosting method is secret sharing. Shamir's secret sharing of infomercial fame allows you to split a secret into, let's say, 10 pieces, but dictate that you only need like five pieces for the secret to be reconstituted, and it doesn't matter which five pieces or what order. I just find this concept cool, but there are numerous white papers with secret sharing and steganography in the title, so we're good here. <laughs> um, secret sharing uses polynomial interpolation, which I rebrand as many numbers between points on a squiggly line. And for the short, short, overly simplified version, I'll explain with linear interpolation first. The secret is one, two, three. We draw a line on the graph where y is the secret and x is zero. Pick any three points along the line. These three coordinates are the secret shares. If we didn't know the secret, we could use any two of them to solve the linear equation and find the value of y when x is zero, also known as the y-intercept. 
to create more than two necessary shares, we, like at a high school debate team, we make a lot of good points on the graph and get squiggly with them using Lagrange interpolation. It's a way to plot the most direct smooth line between multiple points. The secret is still the y-intercept, but now more points need to be known to find that value. All right, so if we split our secret into shares, we can embed them in any order, and that decreases our chances of getting got by a steg analyst. You especially want to avoid active ward in steg analysis. This is like the Hulk smash approach, and they mess with the cover object with the intention of destroying any potential message, doesn't matter if it's one there or not, while preserving the cover media, of course. Speaking of wardens, AI models are used in steg analysis, but I find the stego files they can create a more cheerful topic. And they excel at constructing coverless stego objects. These come in two flavors, which I'll try and go through fast, but <laughs> in a um, way that we can all understand. The first is a selective coverless stego, and essentially this exploits hash collisions. You start with a database with a bunch of images and their hashes, and then you break up your secret into pieces and then choose pictures that, um, whose hashes match your secret, and now these are your stego images. There's no embedding, and the secret and the receiver just need to share the hashing algorithm as the stego key. The other type is a generative coverless stego. You take your secret message, map it to a noise vector, and feed that noise into your generative model, and voila, a stego image for which there is no original unstegoed version of it to compare it to. All right, so as, as AI becomes more accessible, creating a stego file will be trivial, and steganography is easy again, though anything generated by AI is potentially easy to spot. So steganography is challenging. And what does it all mean? I like steganography because it is challenging and magical and more of an art than a science. All the embedding approaches can be combined in countless ways, and since machine learning got into the game, well, it's a spy's world, and we're just living in it. And on that note, did anyone get the secret message? No, no, that's cool. Or I heard a yes. Awesome. <laughs> well, here's the big reveal. It won't win any imperceptibility awards, but some letters were bold in the slide titles, and if you spell out only those letters, it says vote. And not to get political, but I live in Louisiana. This is a very good message for Rick Astley, because I had to roll you. 